Hi everyone, it's MJ, the fellow actuary, and in this video, we're gonna be looking at what you should study in 2022. Now, the reason why we're making this video is because I got a question from a student who has finished school and is looking to enter university and is asking what they should study. So I thought, why not make a video about it? Because even in their message, they said that they've been following my channel for some time and that they think I should upload more often. So basically killing two birds with one stone, uploading more often and gonna be answering the question. So the question is this, um, hi MJ, I'm a grade 12 student and I'm here to ask on mathematical careers. I have a passion for maths, finance and computers and I'm planning on doing CS, which I think stands for computer science next year. And I was wondering if doing a pure maths degree is a bad option as I've been advised against it by multiple people especially teachers. I was originally planning to switch over to the mathematics of finance at WITS, but WITS has temporarily put the degree on hold for 2022. Is it a good degree to pursue or not? And then of course it talks about how they've been following my actual YouTube channel. So look, when it comes to deciding what to study in the new year, it depends on your own personal circumstances. And that's why it's always advisable to go to someone who does career planning, someone who will look at your life, look at where you are and help you determine what you should do. Because depending on your situation, that is going to, I guess, change the advice one will give you. If you're coming from a very wealthy family and all your expenses are taken care of and you've got no responsibilities going forward, then of course the advice is always to follow your passion. And this is what we've seen with people in the past. Um, Soren Kierkegaard, for example, he had a very, very wealthy family and therefore he chose to study philosophy and you know make a big contribution in that regard. If you don't have a wealthy family, then studying something like philosophy, it's gonna be tricky because there's not a whole bunch of jobs available for philosophers, which is weird because in my opinion, I think they can add quite a lot of interesting takes to the boardroom, but businesses don't see their, their value. So I guess the very first piece of advice is look at your own personal uh, circumstances. If you can afford to pursue your passions, then of course, go for it. If you will be taking on a loan to study and you're gonna have you know, responsibilities, maybe family members that you need to take care of and all these kind of things, then you definitely want to study a practical degree. This is something like accounting, actuary, lawyer, doctor, you know, a profession where there's a job ready for once you finish your degree, you basically slot into the system and you can start earning a salary. And I think this is why you're getting advice against studying pure mathematics. Because if you study pure mathematics, yes, you're very intelligent, yes, you're very enlightened, but you don't have a skill that allows you to just plug in very quickly into a corporate job. But, and this is why I'd say it's, it's, a, it's a difficult thing to just give advice or why well, I didn't just give a text message like, yes, it's a good idea or go for this, because there's another thing that you need to consider as well. Not only your own personal circumstances with regards to wealth, but also your personality type. So if you're someone who likes to follow the rules, you like systems, you like institutions, you like, you know, just things being straightforward paths, then of course, again, studying actuarial science, accounting, lawyer, doctor is a good thing to do because that career path, it's kind of like an, a road that m many people have already traveled before. And it's kind of like, you know, where you're going, you know what the destination is. If, however, you're adventurous, you're entrepreneurial, you like a little bit of chaos in your life and you know uncertainty doesn't scare you that much, then feel free to study, again, something that you're maybe more passionate about, and then you can try and, you know, especially if you're adventurous, you can go online, you can find jobs that are looking for people who have a pure maths, and you know, you might be able to to have a more adventurous uh, career. So again, it, it comes down to what is your personal circumstances, specifically with regards to wealth, responsibilities, and all of those things, and also about your personality type. So there's the Myers-Briggs uh, test that you can do, which looks at the 16 personality types that Carl Jung uh, kind of established. That's maybe a good thing to, to do if you don't know anything about your own personality, and then read up on the strengths and the weaknesses 
and whatever career path that you kind of have. And of course, read it and think, I mean, like, yeah, this, this does tie in with my, my whole personality type. And then use that to kind of kind of go forward. Um, but yeah, just more on, on the specific message. I mean, I think computer science is absolutely amazing, especially the way the world's going with blockchain, technology, internet, all these things. Computer science, you cannot go wrong with computer science. I highly, highly, uh, yeah, put that put that on a big, big one. Um, whereas financial maths, the fact that Vitz has put financial mathematics on hold, is probably a good thing. Um, for me, finance is, is so much more than just the mathematics. And sometimes it's incorrectly taught that, oh, you go into finance class, you learn how to do all your discount cash flows for bonds, you learn all your little formula on how to do this, how to make the coupon, blah, 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 and a time value of money. And we very much start thinking about finance as being a mathematical subject, as a scientific type of subject, whereas it's more the more I think about it, the more I've been reflecting on it, it's more of a psychological sociology uh, kind of subject because it's all about the interaction with other humans. Um, of course, it's sometimes put in, well, yeah, you can imagine with me, I did my fellowship in finance and I'm teaching financial mathematics, but then when you see it out in action and when you think more about it, like I say, there's, it's much more of a softer science than a hard science, which is how it's portrayed in academia and at university. So I actually would advise a, against doing a, an entire degree around financial mathematics. Yes, maybe take it as a subject, but that could maybe actually skew your perception on the topic of finance. So like I say, hopefully I've given enough thoughts around it. Um, for me, I mean, I studied actuarial science. It's actuarial science is a lot to study. Like it really, really is a lot, and it takes takes a lot of time. And unless you really want to go that institutional route of getting into, you know, an insurance company or helping out with pensions and playing within regulatory rules, um, then maybe actuarial science might not be worth it for you. Uh, you might want to maybe, you know explore computer science, which does open up a lot more uh, possibilities when it comes to entrepreneurship. Uh, but a good thing to study at university is statistics. So mathematical statistics, I would put above mathematical uh, finance, and that just really gets your mind thinking in a whole new level. And like I said, computer science as well is a great one. So yeah, uh, you've got a passion for maths, finance, and computers. I mean, course that's like a perfect combination almost for blockchain crypto and all those kind of things which is another topic that we're going to be talking a lot more about on this channel uh, specifically this year because i am working for a crypto uh, blockchain at the moment polygon so expect more videos and of course bias as well now uh, because of that but hopefully that answers your your question if not please feel free to to have a follow-up question either you or anybody else watching this in the comment section below and yeah, hopefully we can make more videos in 2022 and I can help you guys with what's the best thing to study. Because at the end of the day, another thing maybe just to wrap off with is another mistake I see a lot of people do is they think, oh, learning is only restricted to what they do at university. And once they finish university, there's no more studying. It's like, no, 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 no. We need, we're in a, such a complicated world right now that we need to study as a lifelong hobby. So you always want to make time to study. You always want to, so whoever you are, although probably if you guys aren't students, you've already turned off this video by now. But if you're still with me, 2022, make sure you're studying at least one thing new. Study, 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 even after university, even after you become an actuary, it's very important that you keep studying either further in the field or even study something completely different uh, and then try and see how it all links back up. So really do want to motivate everybody to study in 2022. Uh, but like I said, any thoughts or questions, leave them down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to address them. Thanks so much and hope you guys all have an amazing year. Cheers.